you've been around the Charlotte Mason world for a minute and you keep hearing about nature lore and you're wondering what is it, what is its purpose? Well, today I wanna to share some of our favorite elementary nature lore books. Heather. I am mom of the seven ages two to 14 and we have been homeschooling for about seven years. Today I want to share with you some of our favorite nature lore books. So nature lore is when you are taking a nature topic, animals, plants, something like that, and you are fictionalizing it. Um, and it is a way for children to learn about a subject from a storybook and it has factual information about the creatures or plants in it and it helps them to learn about um, whatever that may be through story and it is so beneficial especially in the younger years but even in the older years it's books that we are drawn to because of the story format today i want to share with you our favorite for elementary so first up is james harriet now i will say that his other books um, our high school and adult reads, <laughs> but he does have a set for children and there are several different versions. I have the treasury. We have a couple of paperbacks. Um, the children's one is just delightful and this is where I start my kids in year one. So this is what I'm reading with my year one this year and these are just delightful stories. If you don't know though, he has reached greater popularity with the PBS show, but James Harriet was a veterinarian in um, England years ago and these are stories from his veterinary um travels and occurrences and all of my kids love these stories they love to flip through them these particular picture books have really beautiful pictures in them the stories are rather short but they teach you a little bit about the animals and how he cares for them so this is always where i start first now the next book i'm going to do with my year one student i actually don't have here because i went to make this video and couldn't find it but i have the others in the series we'll be doing the burgess bird book which people either love or hate <laughs> This is really what it comes down to. I also have the animal book and the flower book. These are um, hardback prints from Living Book Press, which I really recommend their um, updated versions, whether you get paper or hardback, doesn't matter. But because they have these real images in them and having the photographs in there will help your child to better recognize and understand what the creatures are in either the animal, the flower, or the um, bird's book, which is our favorite. But um, it goes through the bird's book and the animal book um, kind of follow a similar pattern and it's Peter Rabbit not Beatrix Potter's Peter Rabbit it's just a colloquial term for a cottontail rabbit so he's in the meadow and he's having his friends come back from winter um, migration and he talks to them and as he goes around he meets the different birds and he talks to them about their homes what they eat um, their habitat, um, our habits rather, and yeah, just you learn all about the different kinds of birds and there are a lot of great supplements for that particular one. However, just reading the book is one 100% fine. Um, I really recommend, like I said, I wish I had it. I couldn't find it, so it must be in my stack somewhere. But it has such beautiful pictures. <laughs> Maybe a mole is not the... <laughs> the best picture but they really do help you and there are so many great ways that you can incorporate this in your daily walks and things like that if those creatures are near you which you'll have kind of a mix so after we do Burgess Birds and James Harriet they're working towards independent reading by that time so they finally finished Burgess Birds probably around mid second grade and that's when they're going to start reading independently and I love to move my kids on to the um Arabella Buckley books afterwards. Again, these are a living book press and I do recommend them just because of the imagery in it. It is beautiful photographs. So these books, um, have, it's a series and so it'll go through different um, habitats and topics. Um, and I believe there's even a second series. We only have the first one. But um, so you have wildlife in the woods and fields, um, by pond and river, plant life field and garden trees and shrubs birds of the air and insect life um and they are wonderful because they do tell it in a story format the animals do different things they um are just going about their daily lives and do things and so my kids really do enjoy these and they especially love the pictures except in the insect one that one they said they had to cover up the pictures to read but I highly recommend Arabella Buckley as a good because um I don't know if I showed but the font is a decent size and the chapters are really short um you could definitely break them up into two readings if you need to but that was about squirrels and that was just two pages 
Um, two pages were full pictures, so I highly recommend Arabella Buckley. And then the next one that we move on to is Claire Dillingham Pearson. It's among the whatever people. <laughs> and so we have Forest Pond and Meadow. Um, and there, I think there's a couple others, but my kids have all enjoyed this style of writing. Um, she does a really great job of kind of incorporating the children into the story. And as you can see, it's a lot more text now. So this one hits about third grade for my kids, um, maybe fourth grade. And they just really enjoy um, this particular story because it is something that flows and they kind of get connected to it. Um, some children connect a little bit more than others, but um, this has been a great kind of segue. And so that's kind of how we build our nature lore. We have the James Harriet, then we do the Burgess books. And yeah, you don't have to get these big ones. He also um, has a lot of like little tiny booklets that you can get um, that we have. Um, there, it's like an endless supply of Burgess books that you can read about animals until you read them all. Um, and many of my kids get them from the library. Um, they're great early readers if they're independent and they're starting, not early readers, but maybe young readers, second grade, they can read on their own. Or you can get these and read them as a family. Um, then we move on to the Arabella Buckley and finally the Among the People series. And I highly recommend them. There are many moms out there who have come before who showed me the way to these and um, they've just been delightful. There are a lot of other picture books and things like that that can fill in that nature lore. But these are great to just have on your shelf and use, especially with multiple children, because you can work through them. They are awesome series of books that kind of progress and take you through a myriad of animals plants and habitats and so I hope that that is helpful um, how we utilize it is we read and then we narrate if you're new to Charlotte Mason you may be wondering exactly what you do but we would read those two pages about the squirrel and then I would ask them about the squirrel I may give them a coloring page while they're reading so that they can color a squirrel or we may afterwards go for a walk and see a squirrel we can see them out our window most of the time um, but we would do some kind of extension with it because it's something local however when it's a moose um, for example from the Burgess animal book we don't have those around here so we would read it and they would narrate if I think when we did moose my kids were like well what does a moose say so we looked at a video of their moose calls um, to extend it but really it, it comes down to the reading and narrating and that helps give them that basic what we would call earth science topics in elementary education it it covers all of that through nature lore um, you're going to get a lot of it through your nature study as well and we'll give you a local feel for those things but this nature lore opens their eyes in a way that a textbook just can't um, so I highly recommend you check out some nature lore. Here are four topics. I'll list them below as well. Um, and if you have any questions or maybe suggestions of other great elementary level um, nature lore, please let me know. All right. Have a great day and thank you so much for watching. Let us go forth and strive to serve our families and the Lord wholeheartedly. <laughs>